Hey there, amplifiers. You know, when you're in the midst of being in the business, in the trenches, it's really hard to see where you're at. It's hard to get that fresh perspective. We all have a blind side. And today we're going to be talking about how to see your blind side in business. We've got a wonderful guest who has an experience and knowledge really helping business owners see the blind spots that they have in their business and how to get around them, how to get ahead of them so that they can strengthen their finances and build a profitable, successful business. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you're subscribing to Growth Amplifiers. You can visit us on YouTube. Um, we have the best tips, tools, and strategies for growing your business, elevating the value and experience you provide. We're aiming to give actionable insights for you to sharpen the saw, continue to amplify. So a couple of weeks ago, I was attending a conference down in Orlando, Florida, and I was watching a basketball game for a little bit, and it was out in the court, and these girls were playing basketball, and you know they were doing a pretty good job. But I was noticing, man, it's, it's hard to keep track of everything when there's so many people on the court, and you're in the middle of the game. I never really got into a lot of sports when I was a kid. I got more into art and music, but I was impressed by these ladies skills but even sometimes they would make mistakes and then i went up to my room and as i was going up to my room i noticed wow look i could see right over the court and i can get i can see how things are moving completely differently i've got a completely different perspective and so that's what can happen is if you're in the game you can't see it from a fresh perspective sometimes you could use a guide someone who could give you a bird's eye view and tell you the things that you may not be able to see because you're in the middle of it. And so our guest today uh, is the president and CEO of ProWise Financial, Eric Levenhagen. He's helping independent companies save taxes, increase profits, and the results are even guaranteed. He's an excellent coach and advisor, and I'd like to welcome Eric to Growth Amplifiers. Eric, thanks for joining in. Hey, thanks for having me, Kenny. Glad to be here. So I uh, know a little bit about your background. If you could tell guests as they're tuning in just a little bit about um, your path to get to where you're at today. How did you get to do what you're doing today? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, you know, I've always been interested in business since I was uh, from a young age. And I guess I was fortunate to find out at a pretty early stage in life that I was pretty good with the numbers and with accounting and with taxes and kind of areas that a lot of people that I was around at the time and hey, still are around today, kind of find uh, confusing at times or just difficult to to uh, make sense of. So, um, so I went down that path. I wasn't in the accounting industry very long until I noticed that there was like there was this huge problem and it existed, you know, over 20 years ago. It still exists today is that um, a lot of CPAs, a lot of advisors, well, they're doing good work, but a lot of them seem to have the wrong idea about their role on that business owner's financial team, right? Mm -hmm. um, most are focused on the compliance aspects, crunching numbers, filing return by appropriate deadlines. And these things are important. I don't want to discount that like at all, right? We, we all need to have our taxes filed. We need to have our books put together um, in an organized fashion. But, you know, most of them after that, they just call it a day, right? Mm -hmm. um, think if you're, this is an analogy I use, think if your doctor did this with you, right? If you went in for, not because of emergency or something's wrong, just for, an annual doctor's visit and uh, annual checkup. And you walk in, they take your vitals, you know, so they check your weight, height, take your temperature, blood pressure, maybe they draw some blood, person tests, and then they just, maybe the doctor walks in, maybe not, they hand you the, the results from the tests and then you just leave, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's like, okay, I've got these reports with great, you know, with these little numbers on there that means something to my, and probably something important and it could be something drastic to my overall health. I don't know if I have a problem brewing or not, but I'm going to pick out the two or three that I feel are important or that I've heard before. And so can contextualize and uh, think, you know, 
obviously that doesn't happen, but if that were the process with going to the doctor, it'd be like, that's what we'd be left to do is just kind of guess and, or just look at a very small piece of the picture. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I, I remember going to the doctor myself and getting the physical and getting the, the report back. And for the most part, I was very fortunate and, and saw like everything was working out, but there was a couple of things that had the little indicators like, Hmm, this is something that might need to be looked at. And I was like, right. Jace, I kind of want to know what's going on there and what I should do about it. Uh, it's very important. Exactly. So being that that's the challenge, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, this would be a great time to do this. That's the challenge that people are maybe not getting this um, insights. Can you dive a, a bit deeper on, you know, what, um, what that lack can cause and then maybe some ideas for how to get around that challenge. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, so like I said, you know, bookkeeping taxes, those are important. Taxes and financials are essentially your kind of organized, they're your vitals as mm -hmm. well, that analogy, but also, I mean, they're organized raw data, right? It's not complete raw data. It's not the transactions. It's your transactions and uh, other items that have been organized. So I guess really the ultimate goal is to, be able to interpret that raw data to set a strategy, make decisions that are going to be, you know, make your business more productive, more efficient, and, and at the end reward you as the business owner for, for running a profitable enterprise that can help more people, right? There's an inherent reward that comes with that, both financial and non-financial, but we're talking about financial today. So, um, that's, you know, what we, we very aware of, of both sides of that. So, um, you know, a financially, we talk a lot about financial health of a business and that's a lot like a healthy body, right? It takes a number mm -hmm. of systems working together in harmony to stay healthy and to optimize performance. So a lot of times what we're, what we're helping folks do is cut out, you know, cut out maybe five, 10 years of time of earnings potential and power for a lot of, you know, for a lot of our clients, I live in the world of, of professional service providers who own their own mm -hmm. business. And a lot of times they're in business for themselves. You know, maybe they, some of them have partners. Most of them are uh, on the business themselves, uh, sole owners. And, you know, they have employees to support. They're supporting a family, growing a family. That business is most of the time, like they're, Sometimes they're only, but a lot of times their major source of income is their biggest wealth accumulation tool during the prime of their of their career, right? Mm -hmm. So they're looking to make a big difference, not only on the people that they serve, but also for themselves and their family and their generational wealth. And so being able to really optimize that performance, because you only have a short window, right? It's, it's true. It seems to fly by like lickety split. Seems like just yesterday I was just entering into my 30s and then blink that decade's gone i'm like wow yeah. that was pretty quick <laughs> yeah right so um, yeah I, I thought i thought that through my 20s and my 30s and <laughs> i'm thinking it through my 40s as well but you know is it's i liken it to um like you know professional professional athletes what their window's smaller but a lot of times when we're in the middle of it and we talk about you know people and we hear about people having 20 30 40 year careers, whatever the case is in business in some sort, it's, it's easy to kind of lose that context that, Hey, you know, you've got that time except for, you know, like, like you were I, like we may have 40 years. Uh, I'm already halfway through that, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so keeping that into context. And, and so to know that there is, there is some, uh, if you want to accomplish what you set out to, and you know you, you want to hit those goals you want to um you want to start sooner rather than later because like i said it's going to be over it's going to be over in a heartbeat uh, or, or seemingly when you're looking back at it um the other thing though you know so that's like the good side and the optimization side and a lot of times some folks are, are uh, at the level where um you know they're not worried so much about optimization that might be listening out and thinking, gosh, Eric, that, that sounds great, but I'm having trouble. Like I just got nailed with a huge tax bill a couple months ago or, or last month or for on extension, still don't know what the heck it's going to be. Uh, maybe you're in that boat or, you know, 
um, we just have trouble. Some folks still having trouble uh, making secure, guaranteeing payroll every couple of weeks. We you got know, the the good old inflation right now that is changing everyone's yeah, economic, landscape. Yeah, yeah, economics are changing, uh, which is affecting uh, affecting folks as businesses, and we need to be able. To, I mean, those are not necessarily things we can control, but we need to adapt to and. And so, um, you know, yeah, this is this is the time, you know, where as economic uh, the economic picture changes, um, that's the time where we find out, like, you know, that's that's, kind of, that's the stress test for your business. We find out if you're growing and, and building a sustainable business model from that, because a lot of people can can survive in the good times and not that we're in like terrible time, but it's just, it's fluctuating. Right. Right. So, and then better to hear that now than when, you know, we do take a a major dive or, you know, full on recession or whatever the case is, those, the things come in cycles. It's always going to happen. You know, what the current or the typical economic cycle is about like 10 or 12 years. And so every 10 or 12 years, we got to be, we got to be prepared for, but that preparation, that preparation comes within those 10 or 12 years, not, not the day after it breaks on the news. I, I knew a, a gentleman who had a, a company, an advertising agency, and he was doing really good when the market was obvious. And this was his best client was in real estate. This was like 2005, 2006, mm-hmm. 2007. He was just blowing up. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have a way at looking at his business. He didn't plan ahead. And so when that crash came, boom, it punched him really hard, took his business down. And I'm not doing that to scare everyone who's tuned in, but saying, you know, he should have been looking at a holistic plan to mm-hmm. protect from that potential uh, change in his business because he wasn't thinking ahead because he didn't make that plan, he ended up losing his business, dealing with all the anxiety and the stress that came along with it, and taking a job that made him feel like he was sacrificing his soul. Long story short, um, we got to be thinking about what are what are the solutions, right? We have these challenges, things that we can avoid, things that we may not even know that are problems around the corner. So what are the things that people can do to start being more mindful and preventing themselves from the potential challenges that lie ahead. Yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, there's, there's the overall strategy because then we can, you know, start with strategy and dive into tactics perhaps, but there's a lot of tactics, right? There's a lot of things. Business is, um, can be complex uh, at times. And so the overall strategy is, like I said earlier, taking that, taking that raw organized data and turning it into, um, actionable set of, you know, it's an information system, right? So mm-hmm. we need to derive actions from it to allow us to uh, know that, you know, what decisions need to be made, what's what's going right. It's like, what should be happening that's not, and what what's uh, what has happened that shouldn't have happened, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so in a lot of those things, a lot of times I tell folks, we help, and there's there's systems that are built from any anywhere, everywhere from, the moment that just before the revenue hits the door, meaning as you're selling or producing, generating revenue, even before you collect it, uh, all the way until, you know, uh, hopefully we'll go through kind of like I usually talk about it as being like a gauntlet of of activity that's trying to strike that down or, or take chunks of it away in mm-hmm. different forms until it comes out to the end, not as bottom line on your PL, but it comes out a step a step further, which is positioned in a way that you can leverage and, and secure your financial future and or the financial future of the business itself, right? So there's a lot, like I was talking about systems before, there's a lot of systems in the middle of that that um, are, are beyond the, the bookkeeping, right? Um, or beyond filing a tax return. So we know that, you know, cash flow is a huge, is a huge issue. Um, most businesses fail and, and actually SBA did a study not too long ago that said that, uh, what was the number? Like 83% of small businesses in America, uh, are struggling to pay their bills cash flow wise, right? And they have cash flow struggles. A lot of, a lot of business owners, or a lot of businesses, uh, if they didn't get, 
uh, collections or revenue in the door in a week or two, they would be they'd be hard pressed to pay to keep the lights on, keep the doors open, right? Or they have to go into debt, or they have to pull in money from from somewhere else. So cash flow, uh, cash is king. We all know that. But putting in a system in place, so it's one of the one of many, right? Putting in the system in place is going to capture not only cash flow but capture free cash flow because at the end of the day, that's the um, <clears throat> excuse me, that is the ultimate goal of what's going to provide for self-funding your growth, for rewarding yourself as the owner, um, for paying your taxes, even though we talk a lot about tax strategy, which is going to be another one of the, uh, the systems. But, uh, you know, it, we could do a lot on tax strategy. The, the, the point is, or the, the bottom line there is, if you are in an operating business, you know, working to make money in America, you're likely, there are some exceptions, very few, you're likely going to pay some tax, right? It's just, mm -hmm. we're not going to get you to zero while you're, while you're working, but we can minimize that very, uh, very well. And, you know, by just maximizing what's in the law for business owners, big and small, uh, there's, you know, there are core strategies that apply to every business owner, no matter uh, if you're just starting out or if you have been in business for 20 years, um, or more, right? There's there's these core pieces of the tax code that every business owner should be looking at. Um, and then once we get beyond that, we need free cash flow most of the time to be able to capitalize on more advanced tactics and strategies that can also carry a really big impact. So kind of working all this together, right? We fix the cash flow. We start taking a deeper look at the financials and what those are actually telling us so we can spot, hey, do we have, you know, do we have cash caps? Are we are we growing at too rapid of a pace that we're going to outgrow ourselves? Are we not using our resources like our assets or our people or, um, you know, our workforce well enough? There's all these there's all these pieces that got to be balanced as we grow profitability. The next natural issue that's going to come up to bat down is the tax piece. And that's we need to get beyond that before we can be left with actual free cash flow, spendable cash that or disposable cash that can go into one of those one of those directions, right? There's always four four major uses of, of free cash flow, which are rewarding yourself as the owner, paying down debt if you have you know bad debt or short term high interest debt that needs to go away. Uh, there's uh, self funding your growth, building reserves. I should put that first, and then self funding your growth, right? And you could see now that if you're tuning in. Your average, you know, CPA who may be doing a really good job at making sure your numbers are in order. Maybe they're doing a really good job making sure that you're compliant. Um, your average accountant is not necessarily proactively looking at each of these areas and working a plan to optimize and improve. And that's what growth amplifiers is all about. It's like finding the small little changes in several areas that could have a big impact on the result. And you don't know what you don't know. So that's why we're advocates for making sure that you're getting a, a fresh perspective and making sure that someone is looking at your blind side, making sure someone is helping you see and identify the bottlenecks that you may be having, and then have a clear plan to take action to avoid that bottleneck, to resolve it, to make sure that you're continuing to grow and improve. So, there's a lot of things that someone could do. We just uncovered, like, there's a lot of things you could focus on. Uh, what might be an action step or something that a first step for someone who maybe they haven't addressed some of the things that you mentioned? Um, what might they consider to do? Because I know for myself, when I started to learn more about what I didn't know, it became a little overwhelming. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many things mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, I mean, so there's there's a couple of things probably that, that come to mind. I mean, at some point, like I said, there are things you, you don't know, you don't know. And so you're going to need that fresh perspective or an analysis um, or just a conversation with, with somebody. But I mean, you know, most of the time we know if there are inherently if there are issues, we just don't know where to go to solve them or, or how to solve them. Right. Um, and so, uh uh, first and foremost is, is, you know, finding people that, that know your industry that are, that are doing this and doing well at it, uh, financial analysis can, and can look at, because like we're talking about this whole system, uh, everything's interconnected and so much of it in the financial services world, I really feel like, you know, 
the, the financial services industry as a whole is broken for, for small business owners because everything's so siloed. We have we have a bookkeeper, we have maybe an accountant, maybe somebody else does the taxes. We have you know financial advising over here. We go to a management consultant who are great with practice management and digging down into like the minutia, the, you know, the, the very core action steps for that business. And they have, you know, that they have their place as well, but they're not um, always like financial analysts, tax experts, folks like that. Um, but I mean, you know, the first steps, if, if I'm thinking about this and, and saying like, what would I do on my own? I, mm-hmm. First and foremost, it has making sure that number one, you're working with good data. I was, I was going to say, I had to back up for a sec. Cause I was going to say, um, just get real with your numbers and figure mm-hmm. out and take a look at, you know, uh, what's your, not only what's your like re- things like revenue growth and, and the bottom line on your P and L, which most people don't. Uh, really understand how to interpret, but it's, you know, make sure, uh, see what your free cash flow has been. How, how's your bank account balance actually been growing over the past couple of years in relation to your revenue? So if your revenue is going up, if you look at your balance sheet, your assets are going up, but your cash flow is dwindling, there better be a reason for that. Uh, you better know why. So you can start to do some of these like really simple self-assessment Mm-hmm. Items. Take a look at your, your cash flow, uh, how much you've been able to pay yourself. Um, you know, are you able to uh, 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 are you able to fund growth or have you had to take on debt? If you had to take on debt, especially for like basic overhead operating expenses, that's a warning sign. Uh, it's a pretty big warning sign that we're not covering at least the, the general operations. So number one, just it, it is all going into just being really true, uh, truthful with your numbers and just take mm-hmm. a big look in, have your business take a look in the mirror and you as the owner for managing that and saying, uh, how are we really doing? Because a lot of times, again, I get there too, right? But that's why I have coaches and consultants and mentors on my team because I'll get into the weeds of things and be be super busy and the revenue is growing and maybe even the cash uh, of the bank account is swelling but there's there, there's other things that I should be paying attention to um, that is just I have a hard time saying because it's, it's hard to be objective with ourselves, right? It's nearly impossible. So uh, yeah, you look at you look at a team, right? A successful championship team, they don't just have one coach, right? They have a team of coaches coming together to look at different aspects, and so like getting a board of advisors to look at the different aspects of their business and making sure you know you might you maybe not engage with a whole team at, uh, a board of advisors at one time but you could say all right i'm gonna i need to focus on this area right now so let me connect with someone let me get a fresh perspective let me get that tight and then maybe i work on another area but but i want to just uh, advocate for the people who are tuning in because i see this challenge sometimes people start getting into their mind that coaching or advising is for people who are, who are having challenges and not necessarily for people who are already doing good. And I think that's a big myth that holds people back because it's for everyone. It's for successful people as well. Everyone has a blind side. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and you know, that, that blind side, I mean, and sometimes it could be something that's small, uh, you know, that, that hits you small. I mean, sometimes it's, uh, it, we are talking about blindside, and of course, I'm going to think about a football analogy. So sometimes that blindside is going to come through and just, you know, push you out of the pocket for a bit, and then you can recover. And other times it's going to sack you and, and you know, you're going to have a broken femur and miss the rest of the season or maybe end your career, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's everything in between. And so, um, you know, knowing, and, and I've seen it, I've seen it happen. And it's, it's, it's one of those things when you talk about the really, you know, the worst case scenarios, right? used to be the worst case scenario was uh, was uh, uh, think of something that's going to shut your business down for, you know, months uh, outside of your control. I mean, people had a hard time conceptualizing that until, you know, the pan- we all went through the pandemic together. Wow. That was a very easy thing to conceptualize, right? Um, but the same is true with just a, a single thing or a single, you know, uh, scenario that's going to sink a business or at least severely impact its performance over time. And so, um, so, you know, 
being able to avoid, even being able to avoid a lot of those little missteps. You know, it only takes, we've all heard the analogy about starting from New York with a plan to fly to LA. And mm -hmm. if we start out just with, you know, just a, one degree off of our trajectory, then by the time we get across country, that is a huge gap and a huge, a huge difference. And a huge, for us in business, that re re refers to huge loss of time, energy, money. And those are the time and energy are things that we can't get back or have a redo on. Right. And that's that you mentioned, you know, just a small little one degree can put you in a completely different city. Uh, maybe even a different state, depending on where you're leaving from and where you're going to. Um, so I, um, appreciate some of the knowledge and expertise you've, you've been sharing, giving an awareness again, that it takes really looking at holistically the different aspects of your business, identifying, maybe this is a small thing. It's not a huge thing. It's a small thing, but over time, the impact that, that can have can be huge. Uh, so, you know, Eric has a website, prowisefinancial.com. On the website, he has information, content. They, he does offer consultations as well. Eric, if you want to give a quick shout out, share of what people can expect on your website if they want to learn more about you and what you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, our, our website is split out into two parts. We do have a heavy uh, focus on independent optometrists, but we, we, I work with uh, professional service providers of all uh, of all types. We have coaches and consultants and marketing agencies and, and uh, attorneys and you know a, a lot of a, a lot of folks like that. So you'll see it kind of uh, taking into one or two spots, and then when you get there, you can learn a little bit more about this uh, approach uh, that I call financial harmony, which is getting all of these systems to work together uh, harmoniously, right? Um, in you know. Uh, all with, 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 you know, all of it with moving towards a common goal, which are your goals, however you define uh, prosperity uh, in your life. That's what, that's what we're uh, searching for. I mean, that's what we're, we're working towards. And so, um, yeah, when folks go there, they can set up, they can set up a quick call. My contact info is, is pretty um, out there as well. I always uh, entertain, you know, connections, questions, um, things like that. So, um, you know, feel free to either. And, and if you reach out and with a question or something, I likely have a free resource uh, that I can send back to you to give you some guidance uh, even before we jump on a call. So um, if you have questions, uh, not quite sure where to start, or if you're ready and raring to go, you can set up a quick call and we can we can uh, spend 15 or so minutes and just see if you're, uh, if you're somebody I could help. Excellent. Eric, thank you for sharing that. And I encourage you, amplifiers, it never hurts to get a fresh perspective, to get someone to look over kind of what you're doing. If you gained one idea that can help you just make a small change, it could put you in a completely different place. Uh, so Eric, one of the traditions we have at Growth Amplifiers when we're ending these sessions is if you could share just something you've gained on your journey that might help others on theirs. It doesn't have to be related to your industry. It could be just something that you feel from the gut that would be helpful to others on their journey. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I guess the first thing that comes to mind is something that is a couple of things that my business consultants always remind me of. We always like, seems like we always come back around to these, these couple of things, which is what, and they're, and they're, again, they're tried and true statements, but it's because they're, they're tried and true. Right. So it's, it's what got you here. Won't get you there. You know, and mm -hmm. in the, especially in the context of what we're talking about here today, which is a lot of times some, you know, um, focusing on compliance activities and not having a true partner come alongside you that can take a look over your financials and, and help you guide the strategy. Um, uh, that'll get you so far. Right. Mm -hmm. But it won't it, it won't get you um, to where you could go. That's what I'd say there. Um, and just remember that everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. I always, I've got a big sign up that, <laughs> that says that, um, cause I honestly got to be reminded of that myself. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, I like that one. That's, that's a, a new one. Everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. You got to step outside your comfort zone 
you got to take a little bit of risk and mm -hmm. that's how we grow right sometimes people will, will let that fear prevent them from taking that that risk and they're like well what if it doesn't work well then you'll learn <laughs> but if you do nothing you won't benefit if it works and you won't benefit from learning so you benefit yeah. zero so take a risk get outside of that comfort zone i love it thank you eric you bet all right, Eric, thank you for being a Rockstar Professional. If you've just tuned in to Growth Amplifiers for the first time, uh, make sure that you follow, connect with us. We are on YouTube. We have a podcast. You can go to growthamplifiers.com slash connect or look us up on YouTube. We appreciate you and what you do. Keep on amplifying.